Hello dear friends, it's Israel Essential again. I'm sure you've been experiencing a new world as we have been talking about Israel. It's been touching your spirit, touching your mind, and touching your heart. And even today, we are going to talk to Samuel Smaja, the president of several group of companies. It's indeed great that you could be with us. Thank you. Great. Great <laughs> honor. Uh, Samuel, uh, we want to talk more about Israel as a destination, um, mm -hmm. not just for tourism, but for a life transforming mm -hmm. experience. Uh, you were talking about it in the previous episode. And even here, I know you are a pastor too. Um, the scripture says those who bless Israel will be blessed. Is that a reality even today? I think it's a reality. I think uh, when we look on the world, look in the States, look at the U.S., They've been from the moment they st start standing with Israel, mm -hmm. their economy, since 1973, the U.S. just climbed, their economy climbed. They have their problems, but their economy. And countries that took a step back. Mm -hmm. Look what's going on. I really believe, you know, I'm a Jew, so I have maybe a hidden agenda, but I really believe that the Word of God, where it says that those that bless, they will be blessed is valid and is valid today. Mm -hmm. And we see it all over the world. We see it also on the personal level. Friends who come and stand with Israel and their life changes. They, yes, they might have challenges with their neighbors, they have, with those who oppose Israel. Suddenly you have to be an ambassador for Israel, a spiritual ambassador for Israel. And I'm sure you, you, can, you might get into debates and things like that and people will tell you you're old for fashion. Israel is an apartheid and so on and so on. But if you understand that you're not supporting a nation because they're a great nation. Mm -hmm. You're supporting a nation and you love a nation and you bless a nation because God himself chose them. Why he chose them is the same that I'm asking you. Why did God chose you, Paul? <laughs> it's in true. his divine mind that he chose you and he chose me and he chose a nation. He chose a nation as an instrument to bring the peace of the world through a people, and he chose the people of Israel. You see, if I was if I was God, I would probably choose the Egyptian. They were much more advanced. They were much more powerful. Let's remember when God chose Israel, when, when God chose Abram. Who was Abram? He was a nobody. And then 400 years later, you know, more than 400 years, when they're in Egypt, mm -hmm. and he formed them as a nation, when we see the the call of Moses to do the Passover sacrifice. Yeah, For me, that's the point where Israel was established with the mm -hmm. Passover. And it's very imp important and interesting for us when we talk prophecy and we know that Paul says that everything is a shadow mm -hmm. of what, or everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of what God is doing in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So the formation of Israel as a state starts at the Passover. Now mm -hmm. let's think about it. Do you think that all the people of uh, all the children of Jacob went and did a sacrifice and put it on the post doors? I'm sure they were smart, quote unquote, who says, listen, that's a very, very hidden ritual. Moses, what you crazy? You want us to kill? Okay, kill, do barbecue, sacrifice, we know that. But why do you want me to put it on my po on my doorpost? That's hidden. I'm not doing that. And I'm sure there were good people who helped to clean the streets after this massive barbecue, mm -hmm. who picked up all the garbage and did, uh, did all the right thing, but they did not put the blood. Mm -hmm. Did they exit with the no. people of Israel? No. Because they were busy burying their firstborn. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't obey the Lord. They didn't obey the Lord. So that, from that moment, Israel was formed. And, and it was a God thing. It was not a human thing. Because humanly speaking, what Moses asked them was very foreign for the people of Israel. 
So do I believe that those that bless Israel, the way that God wants them to bless Israel, is, will reap the blessing of God? I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I have no doubt. But you, when you bless Israel, you have to understand why you bless. You don't bless Israel because the government of Israel is doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You don't bless Israel because Israel is a start, start up nation. It's all good and right. You bless Israel because God says they are my, the apple of my eye. Mm -hmm. I love them. I choose them. And if I love God, I want to be involved with what God loves. And I think that's the basis of blessing Israel. The Old Testament, God blessed Israel. But it is on this land, in Jerusalem, God came down mm -hmm. and shed his blood Amen. for the whole humanity to be blessed. <laughs> he could have Amen. gone to any Amen. other country. But he came to Israel, to Jerusalem, to shed his blood for the blessing of the whole world. It's amazing. It's amazing. So the New Testament also, the Lord proved that Amen. Israel is blessed and the law that is the sacrifice of Jesus he, for the whole world and, goes out from and here. And like Yeshua, Jesus says to the Samaritan lady, you know, when, when the, you know that there was a debate between the Samaritan and the Jews, where is the holy mountain? Mm -hmm. where, and then he tells us it's Jerusalem and then he says the blessing will come to the Jews. Yeshua himself said that. And now we're debating with the place of Israel in end time, did God still loves Israel? Does God doesn't stop? Does he stand with Israel? He doesn't stand. Do we need to stand with Israel? If you read the Bible, <laughs> that shouldn't be a question. Now, the startup companies are blessing the whole world mm -hmm. from Israel. What about the gospel? Mm. Uh, God loved Israel, formed Israel, led Israel, and then he came and shed his blood for the whole humanity in Israel. Mm. Today, what is the responsibility of the church in Israel? Mm -hmm. You as a pastor, you also minister along with your companies and so mm -hmm. on, your work in the companies. And first of all, I, I'll start by the end. I think the church has a huge responsibility towards Israel. Mm -hmm. But let's go to the beginning of your question. God chose to come down on this earth gave them the Torah, gave them the prophet, but they still rejected him as a nation. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, well, how come a nation that reads the Bible, see all the archaeological digs, sees the temple, sees the Temple Mount, sees Capernaum, sees all the things, and still don't recognize Yeshua mm -hmm. as their Messiah? How come? Mm. First of all, Paul gives us a, a statement which is, for me, not so easy, but we have to understand that it's the reality. There is a veil on the Jewish people. Mm. And often you ask yourself, what's the veil? How come they don't recognize it? So I think that the veil is, I'm, I'm going to say it and I'm going to explain, is the law and the oral law. The, you see, when you, when, you were, were, when you raised up in the law that you do good, you get good, you do bad, you get bad, now... Jeremiah 30, 31, 31 tells you that won't be anymore the principle. You're going to go do good, you'll get good. You're going to do bad, you're going to get good because it's not anymore depending on you, it's depending on Him. Mm. So this whole concept of grace is a very, very hard issue for the Jewish people. The Jewish people, as a nation, we believe that we have to climb a ladder of righteousness to get to God. God does, is so holy, he's not going to come down in flesh and blood to walk the earth for you and me. So what do you mean I lay, I hold grace as my, if you want to say it, my key for solution? It's a very hard concept for the Jewish mind. The other thing is the whole idea of uh, the deity of the Messiah. You see, if you preach in India, nobody will come to you, to you or in America, wherever you preach, nobody will come to you and say, P Pastor Paul, sorry, where do you see the idea that Jesus has to be divine? Mm -hmm. most, most people will fight on, the, his, on his humanity, not so much on his deity. But for the Jewish people, the whole concept of a divine Messiah is not a known concept. Mm -hmm. So we have to do like what Paul says, if there is a shadow, we have to look for the shadow in the Old Testament 
that God revealed himself in the flesh and blood. Okay. And that's why the shadow that Paul is talking about is, is so important that every statement that we do in the New Testament, every theological statement, we have to show the shadow in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So bring, when we talk to the Jewish people, we cannot bring Christianity to them. Mm -hmm. We have to bring a Jewish Messiah mm. in a way that they can understand. But that's a very hard task. The whole concept of a suffering Messiah. Let's be honest. I don't believe that the disciple even believed that the Messiah had to suffer and die. Yes. They doubted, you know. We know in Caesarea Philippi, in the north of Israel, Peter, Yeshua was prophesying his death mm -hmm. in Jerusalem and resurrection. What did Peter say? Oh, great, I'm going to have redemption. No, he says, no, I won't let it happen. Mm -hmm. Because in his mind, Jesus, you need to take your place in Jerusalem. Even worse than Peter was John the Baptist. Think mm -hmm. about it. John was the one who declared upon him. He said, here's the land of God. He himself, out of his own mouth, yeah, he is the solution for sin. He saw, the, he heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. He saw the Holy Spirit coming in the form of a dove. What else did he need to know that that's the truth? But when he was in prison here in Jerusalem, what did he do? He called his disciple and he said, listen, go ask him, are you the one or should we, what right. happened, John? Yeah. Are you the one or should we wait for another? What happened to you? John, you had probably the most, visual experience than anybody else yes. and you doubting is so the whole concept of suffering messiah is a very very hard concept for the disciple then mm -hmm. and for the jews today what do you mean the messiah had to die suffer and die i'll make it even harder the whole concept of human sacrifice let's be honest mm -hmm. our messiah here from the window we see here from your prayer tower. By the way, if you're watching us and you come to Jerusalem, the best place to see Jerusalem is from the prayer tower here. But when we are looking here, yeah, he was crucified. A man on a cross. It's a human, it's a human crucifixion. Mm -hmm. It's a human sacrifices. Does God want human uh, sacrifices? The Jews will tell you no. If he wanted human sacrifice, he would tell Abraham to to kill Isaac. Mm -hmm. The fact that he didn't kill him, that, that shows us that God doesn't like human sacrifice. Mm. So we have to show places, the shadow again, or in the Old Testament that God, there are cases in the Old Testament that God is asking for human sacrifices. So you see, when we are thinking with, um, or when we're talking about salvation of the Jewish people, they need, yes, they need an encounter of God and that's the role of the church. The more you're going to pray, the more this veil is going to move. And that's why I want to thank you for what you're doing here in Jerusalem, having this prayer tower and having prayer towers around the world for praying for the salvation of Israel. But we also need to know not to bring Christianity, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but to bring a Jewish Messiah to the Jewish people mm -hmm. in a way that they can understand. Wow, that was fantastic. Thank you for this new insight and revelation, which we don't realize uh, outside Israel. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Samuel. Thank you, great God honor. God bless your great, great work. And uh, thank you for carrying uh, thousands and thousands of people all across Israel and giving them a transformation thank experience. You. Thank you. Well, my friend, isn't that fantastic? A Messiah who suffered and offered himself as a sacrifice, the solution for everyone's life and future. That's what happened in Israel, and that's what you will experience here. Continue to subscribe to my channel and be blessed.